Are you ready for Starship's 11th flight? As we get closer to this historic launch, more and more details are being revealed. And just recently, SpaceX finally dropped a full update on what to expect. So, what's in store for the final flight of the Block 2 Starship? I'll give you a hint, it's going to be epic. SpaceX is targeting as soon as Monday, October 13th for the 11th flight test of Starship. As usual, the launch window opens at 6.15 p.m. CT. But this flight isn't just another test. It's got a couple of special things going for it. Starship Flight 11 will be pushing the last of the Block 2 hardware, Booster 15-2 and Ship 38, to their absolute limits. Booster 15-2 is actually the second super heavy booster to be reflown. It previously flew on Starship Flight Test 8 with Ship 34, where it was successfully caught afterward, marking just the third successful catch ever. And it doesn't stop there. This time, all 24 Raptor engines on the booster are reused as well. That's a pretty big step for Starship's reusability goals. According to SpaceX, this flight is all about building on the successes from Flight 10. They'll be running flight experiments to gather data for the next generation Super Heavy booster, putting Starship's heat shield through serious stress tests, and pulling off some upper stage maneuvers that simulate a future return to launch site scenario. Although the booster won't return for a catch, it does have a critical mission to demonstrate a new engine sequence for the landing burn. So how are they doing that, you ask? Well, instead of the usual method, where they relight three engines, throttle down to one, and shut off, this time, the booster will ignite 13 engines at the start of the landing burn, then switch over to 5 engines during the divert phase. SpaceX says this 5-engine setup is planned as the baseline for Block 3. The idea is to give the booster more redundancy in case any engines shut down unexpectedly during descent. After that, the booster will transition to its three center engines for the final part of the burn, enter a hover while still above the ocean, and then shut down and drop into the gulf. The whole point here is to measure how the vehicle behaves in the real world while it switches between different phases of the landing burn, especially as engines shut down or throttle differently. Meanwhile, the Starship upper stage will be targeting several in-space objectives, including the deployment of eight Starlink simulators, which are similar in size to the next-gen Starlink satellites. These simulators will follow the same suborbital trajectory as Starship and are expected to burn up on re-entry. I'm not sure if SpaceX has changed anything about how the Starlink dummies will deploy, because if you remember, even though they successfully deployed them last time, it was a little bumpy on the way out. A single Raptor engine relight in space is also planned for this flight. As for re-entry, things are getting interesting. Tiles have been intentionally removed from Starship to stress test vulnerable parts of the vehicle. What's different this time is that some of the missing tiles are in spots without any backup ablative layer, which raises eyebrows. This actually kind of conflicts with something Bill Gerstenmaier, SpaceX's vice president of build and flight reliability, said a while back. He mentioned they wouldn't push the ship too hard on the next flight, so many of us expected no missing tiles this time. But looking at Ship 38 now, it does seem like there are fewer removed tiles than on Ship 37. So maybe it's a more conservative version of that test. The flight will also include a few experiments and operational changes to prepare for future return to launch site missions. To simulate that future path, Starship will end its trajectory on Flight 11 with a dynamic banking maneuver, testing subsonic guidance algorithms right before a landing burn and splashdown in the Indian Ocean. So even though it's not flying back to Starbase this time, it's doing the groundwork for when that day comes. Oh, and we recently got a glimpse of what that return to launch site trajectory is actually going to look like. The FAA recently released a preliminary assessment of SpaceX's proposed new launch and return trajectories for Starship. According to the report, the flights wouldn't have a significant impact on the environment, which is a key requirement, but it's not the only hurdle. The biggest challenge to Starship's return to Starbase, SpaceX's launch site in Texas, is geography. Unlike Florida, where rockets can launch and land over the wide-open Atlantic, Texas doesn't offer the same flexibility. To avoid flying over densely populated areas, the return path has to follow a very narrow corridor. New maps from the FAA show how that return could look. Starship would begin its descent over the Pacific Ocean then fly over Baja, California, and parts of inland Mexico, carefully steering around major cities like Monterey. 
The final stretch would take it over the Rio Grande Valley before descending vertically into Starbase, where the plan is to have it caught by the Mechazilla Tower. These routes are specifically designed to avoid populated areas, which reduces the risk of debris causing damage if something goes wrong. And the precision of the last Starship flight, splashing down with just a 3-meter miss, gives engineers even more confidence in their ability to stick to that narrow corridor. To get into the right orbit for this return path, SpaceX is looking at two options, a southern route between Yucatan and Cuba or a northern route via Florida. Both keep flight time over land to a minimum. The FAA is also closely monitoring safety risks. Regulations require that the chance of someone being harmed by debris outside the mission area stay below 1 in 10,000. Each launch temporarily shuts down a chunk of airspace, which can affect hundreds of commercial flights. But over time, as Starship proves its reliability, the FAA plans to ease those restrictions. Looking ahead, SpaceX plans to shift some missions to Florida, where there's more room to maneuver. But having Starship regularly return to Texas is a key step toward big goals like orbital refueling, NASA's Artemis lunar missions, and eventually, Mars. These first flights aren't just tests of hardware. They're also testing out a whole new way of doing space logistics. The first flight of Starship Block 3 won't be orbital, and they're definitely not going to try catching the ship right away. This version comes with a ton of upgrades, so SpaceX will likely take it slow to get a feel for the new hardware. That means we probably won't see an orbital flight until at least Flight 13. That lines up with a recent comment from Elon Musk, who said SpaceX might attempt the first full catch and recovery back at Starbase somewhere around flight 13 to 15, depending on how the next few test flights go. But all that's for 2026. Right now, the hype is all about this next Starship flight. As always, if you can't make it to Texas to see it in person, SpaceX will livestream the launch about 30 minutes before liftoff on their official X account. If you're hyped for this one, drop a let's go in the comments. The upcoming flight marks the final launch of a Block 2 Starship, signaling the end of several familiar sites we've grown accustomed to. Assuming all goes as planned, the recent static fire test will be the last ever static fire of a Block 2 ship, and likely the last time we'll see an upper stage Starship mounted directly onto an orbital launch mount using temporary adapters. Following Flight 11, there will be a pause before the next mission, but there's no shortage of activity ahead. As SpaceX transitions to the new Block 3 Starship design and begins operations at Pad 2, a range of new test articles and milestones are on the horizon. Meanwhile, Pad 1 will undergo major upgrades, including the demolition of the current launch mount and the installation of an improved flame trench system. At Pad 2, testing of the Deluge system beneath the launch mount has ramped up in recent weeks. This is a critical part of infrastructure development, as Block 3 vehicles are expected to deliver significantly higher thrust, requiring a more robust water deluge system to handle the increased acoustic and thermal loads. SpaceX is expected to stick with the Block 3 design for the foreseeable future, making these upgrades essential for supporting the next phase of Starship's development. Speaking about the new version of Starship, look at this render. At first glance, you might think this unusual render shows a poorly modeled version of SpaceX's Starship, complete with an oddly proportioned Super Heavy booster. But this is actually a concept image of a new European rocket, part of a bold step toward reusability in the continent's space ambitions. In a significant move to close the gap in the global race for reusable launch vehicles, the European Space Agency, ESA, has awarded a 40 million euro or about 44 million USD contract to Italian aerospace company Avio. The contract funds the development of a reusable upper stage demonstrator, marking a critical first step toward Europe's own answer to Starship. Avio, best known for the Vega launcher, will lead the design and development of a prototype capable of controlled re-entry and landing, a key feature of reusable systems. The goal is to reduce launch costs and increase Europe's competitiveness in the orbital launch market. While smaller in scale than Starship, this initiative is clearly inspired by SpaceX's iterative development model. The timing is notable, with Ariane 6 nearing operational status but lacking reusability features, Europe remains heavily reliant on providers like SpaceX for heavy lift capabilities. ESA leadership has been vocal about the need for sovereign launch options, particularly those embracing modern, cost-saving technologies. According to sources familiar with the project, 
Avio's design will feature advanced propulsion and thermal protection systems, incorporating lessons learned from Starship's extensive flight testing. However, the system will be built to comply with European regulatory frameworks and industrial capabilities. Although the 40 million euro investment pales in comparison to the billions that SpaceX has poured into Starship, the funding represents a strategic pivot toward more agile, cost-effective development models. Avio is expected to collaborate with other European aerospace firms, leveraging regional expertise in composite materials, avionics, and propulsion to fast-track prototyping. Initial design reviews are scheduled for 2027. If successful, this demonstrator could pave the way for a fully reusable European launcher, potentially integrating with future Ariane variants, or operating as a standalone vehicle for commercial and government missions. Looking forward, this mini Starship project could lay the groundwork for international collaboration. A separate agreement between Italy's space agency and SpaceX, as reported by European Spaceflight, hints at possible technology transfers for Mars-bound payloads, a potential fusion of European engineering and American launch capability. ESA's investment in Avio could also help attract private sector funding following the successful public-private partnership models that have driven U.S. space innovation. For Avio, the ESA contract significantly strengthens its standing in a rapidly consolidating European aerospace industry. Company leadership has voiced optimism about scaling the demonstrator for commercial use, potentially enabling missions such as satellite deployment or cargo deliveries to the International Space Station. As Europe grapples with geopolitical uncertainty and supply chain fragility, this initiative marks a strategic investment in technological self-reliance. If successful, it could redefine Europe's access to space, with long-term implications for the region's presence in both Earth orbit and deep space exploration.